Welcome. Uh, we once again find ourselves revisiting some old BC calculus ideas, kind of through the new lens of multivariable. And this week, uh, we'll be looking at the chain rule. Um, so the chain rule, you might recall, is a way of connecting things that depend on different variables together. So the classic example, right, is if we have y equals f of x, y depends on x, and x depends on some other variable t. Well, uh, then I can put these together, I can do dy dt. Well, how does y depend on t? y depends on t through x. dy dx times dx dt. So that's the good old fashioned chain rule. So let's look at uh, what we mean now. So this was in olden times, in BC times. Uh, let's look at what we mean now. Let's say, for example, we have some function z equals f of x, y. So z depends on x and y. Uh, but we know, again, that x and y are changing uh, as a result of some other functions of t. Now, why might we do this? Imagine, if you like, that we've got some you know, graph of z, right? We've got some surface uh, of z that we're moving around. But that x and y are, you know, we're, we're traversing some curve, some space curve on the surface of, uh, of the graph uh, that it's given us to us in parametric form. So we're kind of trying to figure out how is z changing as a result of x and y changing. Well, it's actually going to be very much like what we've seen before. It's going to look like this, but with some new sim with some partial derivatives and uh, some uh, extra terms. So here, what we can do is we can write uh, dz dt. Now I'm going to point out that dz dt can be the same as df dt in this case. So whichever, whichever you like, uh, you can think of as being the same. So we're going to go ahead and write, in this case, dz dt. And that's going to be equal to, um, well, why would z change? z would change because uh, x, and x or y changes. So the partial derivative of z with respect to x times dx dt. And now we need a second term to explain some changes in y. It's the partial derivative of z with respect to y. dy dt. So we just get two terms. Now obviously if z depended on a third variable, we would have a third term and so on and so forth. And it's just worth noting, you might recognize this uh, as being related to the differential we talked about last time, right? Partial z, partial x, dx plus partial z, partial y, dy. Uh, it's just that over dt. Uh, it's um, it's kind of the completion of that idea, that idea, bringing it around to a classic good old derivative. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, at this at, at an example uh, of this. So here we're going to have z equals uh, x squared y plus three x y to the fourth, and in this case uh, x is going to be equal to cosine t and y is going to be equal to sine t. And we'd like to find dz dt uh, when t is equal to 0. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and apply this, right, to find dz dt. So we start with finding partial z partial x. So partial z partial x uh, is uh, 2xy. plus uh, 3y to the fourth. And then dx dt turns out to be negative sine t. Plus, now we'll do our partial z partial y, x squared plus 12xy cubed, dy dt is cosine t. Now you'll notice here, when I'm doing the chain rule, I often get kind of an ugly mixture of x's and y's and t's. Now I could uh, I could put all that together, right? I could convert it all into t, for instance. 
Uh, it's worth noting though that at t equals zero, uh, sine of zero is zero. So y is equal to zero uh, and x is equal to cosine of zero equals one. So x is equal to one. Uh, and that lets us actually simplify this down a little bit because anything that's multiplied by y is going to be zero. So all of these terms are going to be zero. This term's going to be zero. And we'll just get um, this derivative is actually going to be equal to one in this case. Um, and how do we interpret that? Well, one way to think about it is that, you know, this, this uh, dependency, x equals cosine, y equals sine, that is, of course, our good old unit circle. So what partial z partial t tells us is that at any moment t, now for here we happen to choose uh, t equals zero. Uh, at any moment t, what is the rate of change of z as we're moving around, as x and y are moving around that unit circle? And we'll take a look at, at that in class with some you know, Desmos and GeoGebra uh, assistance. Now, there is one other case that we need to kind of consider here before uh, we close up this chapter, which is um, there's no reason necessarily to expect uh, that x and y would depend on just one thing. Uh, so what happens if we have z equals f of x, y, but now uh, x is changing as a function of two variables, s and t? And so is y. So um, just to uh, imagine here uh, why you might get this, let's say z depends on, for instance, pressure. You know, z is a function of, um, you know, pressure and temperature. But your pressure is going to depend on volume and maybe on time. Let's say, what, what if you have, uh, you know, a heater or, um, you know, the, maybe the volume is changing. Maybe you have a heater that's adding uh, more and more uh, heat energy over time. So you can have some complex behaviors. Now in this case, it turns out that things don't actually look that, that, that different. Um, and we just need to ask ourselves this question now. Well, how does Z change with S or T? One thing that's gonna be different, oops, is that these are now partial derivatives. Where up here, it was uh, a normal derivative because kind of z in a sense only ultimately depended on one variable, only depended on t. Now it depends on two variables, s and t. So it's a partial derivative now. And it, but still, why, why would z change? Well, z could change because x changes and x could change because s changes. And still, z could change because y changes, and y could change because s changes. And similarly, with partial z, partial t, we get partial z, partial x, uh, partial x, partial t, plus uh, partial z, partial y, partial y, partial t. So in this case, um, it really looks pretty much uh, pretty much the same. And all we need to do is make sure that we ultimately kind of follow our way down to the correct variable. Um, oh, it's another example of where you might get this. Uh, imagine making a conversion to polar, right? That like x is a function now of r and theta. So is y. You could have some function f of x, y and ask, you know, what is uh, the derivative, the partial derivative of z with respect to theta, for instance, or something like that. 
All right, so we'll do some more examples of this in class, but the fundamental mechanics of the chain rule are really not that much different than they used to be, um, where we just previously had to follow one set of chains from y to x to t. Here we might have to follow uh, a variety of different chains. Um, so we might have to, for instance, start with z, uh, take our derivatives with respect to x and y, and then kind of pick our way down this tree to figure out what variables we ultimately want at the end. So if we're taking our s derivatives, we're going to kind of follow down this way. And if we're taking our t derivatives, we can follow down the other way. 